Hey there, today I want to talk about disruptive habit trap. Are you falling into the disruptive habit trap? Let's take a look. Okay, so let's, what, what do I mean when I say disruptive habits? So we do things every day that can either harm or disrupt our health or that's beneficial and nourishing for our health. So the disruptive habits are the ones that when we keep doing them over and over again, they actually affect the functioning of the cells in our body. So then our cells, our organs, they're not able to function the way they are meant to function. And this causes problems. This increases inflammation in the body. It gives us symptoms. We don't feel as well. So that is what I'm talking about when I talk about disruptive habits. And this is a little bit better way of looking at it. So let's look at the bucket theory. So our body is like a container. It's like a bucket. And every day we're filling it with things. And I'm talking about sleep and food and water and maybe tobacco if we're smoking, maybe alcohol, love, support toxins that are coming in from the, the environment, all of those things are moving into the bucket. Okay. And to be healthy, we want really beneficial things and we want them to add all the way up so we can have lots of energy and feel great. But what happens is these disruptive things, they start to eat away at the inside of the bucket. These toxins, these chemicals, they can actually cause holes in the bucket. And when that happens, all of the good stuff and all of the bad stuff flows out of the bucket. And what happens? We can't make energy. We don't feel well. We start having symptoms. We get inflammation and we get disease. So in order to get healthy again, the best way to do that is to understand what things are disrupting the body, to cut those things out or make sure we have more of the nourishing things. We then also have to think about healing those holes because we've made holes with all of the years and years and years of disruptive habits. So we heal the holes and then we start filling our body with nourishing things. So that's the easiest and fastest way to do it. So let's look at some specific disruptive habits. There's a lot more out there, but I don't have time to go through all of them. So I'm just picking and choosing the ones that seem to be very common with my um, clients. Okay. So rushing. Many of my clients are type A successful women, very busy women, and they've always lived in that type A personality. So that's what they know. That's who they think they are. And being active and rushing around and getting things done, that makes them happy. That makes them feel significant. However, the one problem with that is, is our bodies really strive for being in the parasympathetic nervous system, in the rest and digest. And that's when our digestive system and many other things actually function. So if we're rushing around and you know we're not relaxing during the day, it's definitely going to affect our body. We'll get a little bit deeper into that. So eating while standing, eating in front of the TV, eating in the car, and we'll go into why, because again, your body doesn't want to be in a stress response when you're eating because your digestive system is turned down or very low because that fight or flight you don't want to be having to go to the bathroom when you're either fleeing from something or fighting. So automatically your digestive system is turned down. But if you find yourself eating all the time when you're rushing, of course you're going to have symptoms like acid reflux, gas, and bloating because your digestive system's not working. Okay. So going to bed either really late at night or maybe a different time every night and just not getting quality sleep. Super, super important. We'll get into that. Living a sedentary lifestyle. We've all heard this before. We know that our bodies are made to move. And unfortunately, if we're working all day, we're in our car going to work, we're sitting at work, and then we're going home, sitting on the sofa, and then going to bed, there's not a lot of time for activity. So we'll talk about that. Exposure to toxins. 
So this one can be a little difficult. There are certain toxins that it's really impossible for us to change. Things like glyphosate and that are in the air that we breathe because of the Roundup that's sprayed in our community. So it can be completely it can be impossible to completely get rid of the toxins. However, there's lots of toxins that we can certainly choose not to be around. Plastics that are in our house, beauty products that we are using, cosmetics, cleaning products. So there are many toxins that we can definitely decrease in our environment. Eating processed foods. We get nourishment from our food. So if we're eating processed foods that don't have a lot of health in them, then of course our body is going to be disrupted. And lastly, you know, let's just look at something that I know everybody, I don't, but most people do, is they love their cup of coffee in the morning and a lot of people don't drink it. Um, black, they actually put artificial sweetener or something in it, or they drink, you know, Starbucks drinks throughout the day. So artificial sweeteners and intake of sugar can also be a problem. All right. So we are going to look at each of these things a little bit more detail, and then I will give you tips to change up to find substitutions or ways to decrease these things. So let's look at the three ways to get away from disruptive habits. First off, we really need to acknowledge that we are doing things that aren't necessarily healthy for our bodies because most of us might not even think about it. We just do things on a daily basis. We do things that we like or we eat things that we like and we don't even think about what it's doing to our body. We Acknowledge those things and identify them. And sometimes that's when you need help from somebody else because sometimes we have blinders on and we can't see what we're actually doing. Then replacing these things with healthier options can be really, really easy. And then, of course, creating a supportive environment. And I just mean support from family, somebody who loves you, somebody who's going to be able to do the things that you want to do as well. So it's easier for you to, as well as cleaning up your environment when we're talking about chemicals and toxins. All right, so let's go a little deeper, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is the autonomic nervous system. It has two branches. It has the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight, and it has the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest and detox. Okay, so the parasympathetic nervous system, the beautiful parasympathetic nervous system is the one that allows us to communicate well with people. We can be relaxed and calm. Our food digests really well. We can detox and get rid of things. It's when we are at our best. We want to be in the parasympathetic nervous system the majority of the day. Now, that sympathetic nervous system automatically turns on when our body or our mind thinks that we're in trouble, thinks that we need to go into survival mode. And that's when we're going to get ready to either fight or flee. Okay. This is necessary, of course, but we certainly don't want to be there during the day because we're pumping out cortisol and adrenaline. And these things can be harmful and can really take a toll on our organs like our adrenal glands, our thyroid, our liver, and other things. Okay. So yes, we do need that sympathetic nervous system, but we don't want to be there all the time. And when you're rushing, when you're active, when you're thinking, when you're doing things all the time, your body is actually in the sympathetic nervous system. I call it superwoman syndrome. What we would love is to have ways that we can calm our body down throughout the day. Because yes, we are going to be thrown into that sympathetic nervous system. But if we can realize that we're there and then we can calm our bodies down, we can live a wonderful, happy life. All right. So sympathetic dominance basically turns off digestion because again, we don't want to be having to use the restroom if we're fighting or fleeing. So digestion's turned down. So if you're in the sympathetic nervous system and you're eating, you're not going to digest. If you're 
flipping into the sympathetic nervous system right after you eat, you're not digesting your food. And if you're not digesting your food, you're not breaking it down. You're not assimilating. You're not pulling out all those nutrients that we need in order to make energy in the body. The things that, that, you know, allow us to be healthy. You're not able to absorb those into the body. So it can, it can basically feed our body. So that is the biggest issue, okay? When we're calm, when we're in that parasympathetic nervous system, our digestive system is turned on. We are able to release digestive enzymes that help break down the food. We are able to break it down, absorb it, and get rid of it, okay? It's that natural movement that we want to happen in the gut. And if that's happening on a daily basis, then it's very unlikely that we will have constipation if we're eating healthy and we're allowing ourselves to be in that parasympathetic nervous system. Okay. So the easiest, the cheapest, and the fastest way to shift yourself from the sympathetic nervous system to the parasympathetic nervous system is your exhalation, to focus on your exhalation. That is a shift, okay? Now, this is more of a focused breathing. I like to call it belly breathing or balloon breathing, where we're really using our abdominal muscles, okay? We're using, we're allowing our diaphragm to move up and down, and that's activating that vagus nerve, which is helping calm us down. So let's go through it. You may know this. If that's if you do, then just follow along with me. But otherwise, put your hand on your belly. And I want you to focus on your breath now. I want you to lengthen your inhale and your exhale. And now exhale. And you can do that through your nose. If you're new to this, I would love for you to open up your mouth and sigh out and then think about releasing all that anxiety, releasing that tension that you have in your body. Okay. So inhale, open your mouth and sigh everything out on the exhale. So long, slow breaths. So now I would love for you to move it down into the belly, okay? So make sure your belly is relaxed. And as you inhale, you're actually going to push your belly outward. So your hand on your belly is going to move forward. It's going to move away from your body. And as you exhale, that belly button is going to move back towards your spine, okay? So try it. Just allowing your belly to move forward on the inhale. And then opening your mouth and long, slow exhale out. So I say take 10. 10 of these inhale and exhale is one. And the reason I say 10 is you can do about five of these. And if you're kind of rushing through them, you will still not switch yourself over to that parasympathetic nervous system. I want you to really get into the rhythm, maybe even close your eyes if you're not driving your car and really feel your body relax. So take 10, okay? Whenever you feel stressed, right before you're gonna eat, take 10 of these beautiful breaths. So again, your shoulders relaxed, you can put your hand on your belly if you need to. You're going to inhale slowly, allowing your belly to move forward. If you want to, you can open your mouth and sigh out, and that belly button is going to move back towards the spine. And that's it. All right? So let's look at sleep. Why is sleep so important? It's because we have this rhythm. It's either called the diurnal rhythm or the circadian rhythm. And our body, it's like it's a sleep-wake cycle. It's like a day-night cycle. And this is linked to specific hormones in our, our body, melatonin, things like cortisol. So sleeping, going to sleep at the same time every night and waking up at the same time every morning is going to help your body be on this regular rhythm. Because at night, your melatonin increases. It gets your body ready for sleep. 
in the morning, your melatonin goes down, but your cortisol raises and that gets you awake and ready to move. Okay. So our body works best on this rhythm and sleep is when we heal. So that is super important. All the things that happen during the day, all the cell functions and all the things that accumulate in our body, we need to heal. And that time is during sleep. And we're most active between midnight and two o'clock. So if you're not going to bed until midnight, that's when we're in our deep sleep, then you're affecting healing. You're affecting your liver. You're affecting your lungs. You're affecting your gallbladder. You're affecting all of those important organs in the body that, that function and help move things and clean things out. Okay. So as you can see, it affects, you know, our gut microflora. It affects the hormone levels. Like we said, it's just all around. One of the most important things for us is our sleep. So what can you do to get better sleep? Number one, is you can create a slow down routine at night. If you are coming home from work and you're revved up from work or you're coming from the gym and you're revved up from the gym, it's best if you can slow things down. And one of the easiest things is just to turn your lights down in your house because that's how that melatonin works. When it starts to get dark out, our melatonin knows to rise, okay? So lowering the lights in the house and then doing something very calming, like taking a warm bath, taking a cool shower, you know, stretching, just relaxing. And of course, you know, turning off your computer, your TV, your telephone, all of those things have this blue light that affects your melatonin levels. And if you're watching something that's very active and scary, then that also is going to keep you revved up. So just creating a slow down routine, super, super important. You can also use things like essential oils, lots of different things out there. But the most important thing is, is just to schedule when you're going to go to sleep, to wake up every morning at the same time, and then to create that slow down routine. Sedentary lifestyle. So we know this. We've heard about this forever. Being sedentary is not healthy. It's going to decrease your metabolism. It's going to cause you to gain weight. It's going to, you know, not allow your heart to work as well because you need to actually be, you know, putting some stress on your heart so it works better. It's going to increase inflammation. It's one of the biggest things is we have a lymph system. Our lymph system is like our trash collectors. It's, it's pulling out dead cells and bacteria and things from the body. And that is not connected to a pump like the heart. So we have to move and basically contract our muscles to help the lymph move through the system. Massage can do it, you know, jumping can do it, but we need that movement to help with that lymph. If that lymph gets stagnant, then it's very difficult to be healthy. So what can you do to be more active. Number one is to find something that you actually like to do. Because whenever we say we have to do something, it can be very difficult. It's not very motivating, right? So what can you do that you are going to enjoy doing? I just love walking. I think walking is great. Getting outside, getting some fresh air, being able to look around, going to a place that you like. If it's, you know, a hike in the mountains or the woods or near the beach or something like that. Super, super great thing to do. Riding your bike. You know, maybe it's gardening. Maybe it's cleaning the house. That's that's even activity. But you want to also think about doing these things throughout the day. So if you're at a job where you're sitting all day long, I just, I have this stand-up desk, absolutely love it. So you're not sitting in one spot all day long. You can, you know, increase the, the height of the desk and stand up and you can even kind of move around a little bit. Even when you're sitting at your desk, you can kind of pump your feet, lift your legs, do some exercises, or just take some breaks during the day. Go for a little walk, you know, do something like, you can actually sit up against the wall and do a squat. So you're leaning your back against the wall and you squat down and you're working your quadriceps. So little things like that can certainly increase your movement. But I say walking daily, either before work, 
you know, after dinner, you can wear a headlamp if it's already dark outside. You can do that with somebody that you care about. That's always nice to have somebody to talk to while you're doing it. That's a great habit to get into. Everyday toxins. So mainly talking about cleaning products, beauty products, things in the kitchen. So these things really disrupt our gut. These things are plastics. These things are endocrine disruptors. You've probably heard of that term. And what happens is these heavy metals, these toxins, they actually bind to the place where our hormones should be binding and they mimic our hormones, yet they're not able to do the function that our hormones do. So that can cause a huge imbalance in hormones. That can be thyroid hormones, that can be cortisol from your adrenal glands, it can be your progesterone, your estrogen, your testosterone, it affects all of those things. Plastics actually, or toxins and plastics, actually tend to get stored in your fat cells. So can definitely make it difficult to lose weight. So just decreasing the exposure to toxins. Now, the best way to do this is to go to a link, EWG, the Environmental Working Group, EWG.org. They have lists of ratings of beauty products, of cleaning products, of pretty much everything, toothpaste, shampoo, you name it. It's on that list and they tell you what is healthiest for you. And then you can order those. And I will tell you that most of those things you cannot get at the drugstore. Most of the things at the drugstore that are owned by Big Pharma are just filled with unhealthy chemicals. So Amazon, there's things like Thrive Market where you can order all of your clean products. I highly recommend that. In the kitchen, choosing stainless steel, like for your water bottle or glass, or there's reusable bags and things like that instead of using plastic. And, you know, things like a water filter, definitely getting rid of your Teflon, your stick, your nonstick cookware, not good at all. So making these small changes, adding an air filter, those things can definitely really make huge changes in your life. Okay. Processed foods. Again, we all know about processed foods. And when I say that, I mean things that are in a bag in a box. They're not found in their live natural state. And these things Unfortunately, they just don't have a lot of nutrients in them. So now you're taking in these things that aren't nourishing the body. So they're taking up space, calories, all of those things. And they're definitely going to affect your metabolism. They're going to affect your blood sugar levels. And, you know, if you're eating a lot of processed food, that's when you're going to find yourself in the obese category. That's when you're going to find yourself with diabetes and, you know, increased inflammation affects your microflora. As you've probably seen, almost everything affects your microflora. And that's why we all have such horrible issues with our microflora that's not diverse. And chronic disease, you know, it increases our risk for chronic disease. So how do you change this? Just by choosing different things to eat. By choosing to eat foods in their natural state. So fruits and veggies and meats things that are basically grown in the ground, grown on bushes and trees. That is what you want to eat more of, okay? Move away from things that come in a package. And if you are going to eat things like that, because yes, they are convenient and quick, you can at least start to look at the ingredients and stay away from you know, the seed oils like cottonseed oil, like canola oil, like soybean oil, safflower oil, and still and move into things with that either are made with avocado oil or, or extra virgin olive oil. You just want to get out of the habit of rushing here and there and having to go to fast food restaurants, eating in your car. Go home, relax, and make food at home. Plus, there's so many healthy restaurants out there, even ones that are considered fast food chains. 
Cava, C-A-V-A, absolutely amazing. Sweet greens, tender greens, um, urban plates, all of these things have organic foods, have amazing big bowls that you can eat that are super yummy, healthy, nutritious. Rabanos is another one. So take a look in your area. There's definitely restaurants that are going to be healthier for you. Start going to those restaurants first. That's step one. And then eventually you will be able to maybe get excited about cooking food in the house. I always recommend putting on some music and making it fun, dancing around, whatever you can do. Okay. Artificial sweeteners. Like everything else, it's going to affect your metabolism. What I think is scariest about artificial sweeteners is it affects our brain. It affects our neurological system. So that is why I think these things are things that we want to definitely stay away from. Plus, they can cause a lot of disturbance in our digestive system, a lot of that gas and bloating. So let's kind of look at specific ones. Aspartame, sucralose. Saccharin. I mean, you've probably heard these have been around forever. I'm surprised they're still on the market because there's so much research that shows that neurologically they affect us in horrible ways. Symptoms like migraines and seizures and just things that we don't want affecting our cognition, causing, you know, or increasing ADHD in, in kids. So when it gets to things like erythritol or stevia, they are definitely in the healthier zone, but they still have issues. So none of these things are perfect. And I would say eat them every day. These are things that you definitely want to limit. So when we talk about artificial sweeteners, I would like to say this. If you're drinking coffee and the only way you can drink coffee every single day is to put cream and sugar or just sugar in there. I would really rethink or decrease your coffee intake down to one cup. There's a lot of research out there that says how healthy coffee is for us, but in actuality, the majority of the coffee beans are tainted with chemicals. So if you're not drinking an organic coffee, then you're probably getting more heavy metals from your coffee than you even realize. Coffee beans are great. Coffee is actually a bitter thing and bitter is wonderful for the body. But once you start putting a bunch of sugar or artificial sugar in it, it's really, um, you're kind of changing the health profile of it. So drink less coffee or, you know, try to decrease the amount of sugar or cream that you put in your coffee. Choose honey. I'm not, I know you're not going to put maple syrup in your coffee, but for other things, baked goods, other things, you can use things like maple syrup. And we also don't want you to eat as many baked goods and sweets that come in a bag and a box because they are loaded with chemicals and things that your body does not want or need. Disruptive things. Certainly you can make desserts at home. There's so many recipes out there. You just get on Google and put in a healthy, like no sugar or healthy with maple syrup. Basically there's thousands of recipes that you can follow to make healthier desserts. But also realize that if you have more fun in your life and you're giving more love to other people, that's going to help you release the same chemicals that sugar intake does. That is the serotonin, the dopamine, and even the oxytocin. So if you're trying to lower your sugar levels, increasing having fun, doing things every day that make you happy, you know, giving love to other people, compliments to other people, whatever that is, that's going to help you get that same feeling that sugar gives you. So try that out. Okay. So it's all about balance, mindful eating, taking those 10 breaths before you eat. So you are in that parasympathetic nervous system, being aware when you eat, sitting down, looking at your food, smelling your food, small bites and savoring the flavor. I mean, food is all about enjoyment. So, you know, close your eyes and savor the flavor. Now, if you're with people and you're out, yes, you can certainly have a conversation, but when you take a bite, that's when you should be very focused on that bite and eating it and tasting it. And then once you've swallowed it, 
talk again. But when you're trying to do two things at once, your body is probably in that sympathetic nervous system. That's where the breathing comes in. And remember to move daily, however that is, okay? Have more fun in your life and just make time to relax. Again, it's as easy as just taking in 10 of those breaths. You will feel your body. After you take in the breaths, kind of sit there and see what your body feels like. Feel it. You're going to feel that your heart rate has lowered, that you're not red faced and you're not rushing anymore. You're going to feel calm. Your muscles are going to be more relaxed. It's an amazing feeling to be in. All right. So in order for things to change, we must first be willing to let go of our old ways. So yes, of course, you know, if you're resisting this, then maybe it's not time. But once you are able to acknowledge that the things that you're doing to your body may not be the best things for your body, then you'll be ready to make some changes. And when we strive to become better than we are, then everything around us becomes better too. I love this because it's so true. When you start feeding yourself more and better food and you're moving and you're decrease or you're you know decreasing the exposure to these chemicals you're going to feel better you're going to treat people better your relationships are going to improve you're probably going to your success at work is going to improve so everything about your life is going to improve all righty see you later